How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to describe a way where you can get a portable power station like this and have it pay for itself. I like to thank EcoFlow for sending this portable power station called the River 2 so that I can make this video for you guys. The idea is simple. If you pair a portable power station with a solar panel and then you use a whole bunch of electricity out of this thing straight from the solar power after some time it's going to fully pay for itself this is kind of like a poor man's tesla solar and power wall combination it's going to cost you around 17 thousand dollars a way to think about this is that you are prepaying your electric bill 15 to 20 years in advance. You're not just paying one month at a time. Obviously not everyone has $17,000 to throw around, but a portable power station in combination with a semi-permanent solar panel, it's proportionally smaller. You're gonna pay a lot less and you're gonna get a lot less energy out of it. The MSRP is 239 at the moment. You can pair it with a 60 watt portable solar panel, which costs another $139. And this combination will allow you to plug something in and you know, you can feel good about yourself saying, okay, whatever I plug in is completely solar power. You know, that's kind of interesting. This unit has a total energy of 256 watt hours. What does this mean? You can power a one watt light bulb for 256 hours. Or if you have something that is very power hungry, it uses 256 watts, you can power it for one full hour before this thing runs out. It has two 12 watt USB-A ports, one 60 watt USB-C, a 12 volt car connector that's up to 100 watts, and two AC ports, one with a ground plug and one without, and this can go up to 300 watt continuous and 600 watts surge. Now here is how I think this product stands out. If you plug this in into the AC port, it can charge it in less than 60 minutes. This is insane. Most of the other products out there of this size needs about five to seven hours to fully charge. The battery chemistry is called LFP, which is lithium iron phosphate. This is the better kind of chemistry. It'll last you up to 3000 charge cycles. Many other power banks, including very popular ones, actually use a chemistry called NCM. This is nickel cobalt manganese, which will only last you about 500 cycles. Now, in order to get this unit to pay for itself, you absolutely need LFP chemistry because you need it to last long enough in order to have enough time to pay for itself. Another interesting feature is that you can use this like a UPS. It does take 30 milliseconds to switch over. So if the power ever goes out and you have something plugged into this, you're never gonna see the power go out on the device. It also has app control, which allows you to monitor the wattage coming in from the solar and also the wattage going out of these AC outputs. You can change the AC charging speed, maximum 360 watt all the way down to 50 for whatever reason you want to not charge as fast. The car input, Right now it's doing eight amps. Let's say I wanna go half of that, four amps, right? So now it's 52 watt charging. X-Boost allows you to draw 600 watts of power, but it might reduce in voltage slightly. Things like electric kettles that is not too sensitive, then you can use X-Boost. The flat top surface over here, which allows you to stack multiple units of these things. So you can just buy one right now and not make too big an investment. And then later on you're like, oh, I need more capacity. And then you just buy another one, put it on top and off you go. Assume you use the entire power bank every single day. You charge it up to 100% and you drain it down to zero during the night. And assuming you pay 33 cents per kilowatt hour, each year, you're gonna save about $30.83. This means if you buy this and the 60 watt solar panel, the ROI is gonna be about 12.2 years, which means you're gonna break even after using this for 12 years, which is a really long time, I would say. But because you're probably not going to fully drain this thing every single day, you need to add in some margin, right? It's probably gonna be closer to like 15 to 20 years. One cycle of this thing, every single day for 12.2 years is gonna be 4,450 cycles. But this LFP chemistry, it's gonna only last 3,000 cycles. So how does this work out? When they specify the 3,000 cycles, it's actually when it degrades to only 80% of the capacity. So even after 3,000 cycles, it's not gonna completely go to zero capacity or anything. You'll likely see a lower and lower capacity. It's gonna trickle down from 80%. 70% or 60%, but you can still use this unit. That is assuming the electronics last this long. 
but they do have a five-year warranty. So by the time 12 years is up, well, you're probably gonna go way beyond the extended warranty. If you do try to attempt this, you have to get a solar panel that is waterproof is because you don't want to move it every single day. You don't want to do a lot of work just because it's about to rain, just because it's hailing or snowing or something. And then you go, oh, okay, I got to go outside, fold up all the solar panels and bring it in. And then whenever there's sun, you bring it back out. You don't want to do any of this because personally, I'm lazy. I don't want to do all this work. It's going to net you like a penny or something. So right here, I have a 220 watt solar panel. It's way overpowered for the River 2, but I just wanted to show you guys that this does plug into the River 2 and it will provide up to 110 watts of solar power. I would recommend using a 60 watt why? Because you want to take the capacity of this thing, 256 watt hours, divide it by four or so, and you're gonna get 64 watts. This means if you get a 60 watt solar panel and you have full sun, it's going to shine very hard on your solar panel, you're gonna fully charge this thing within four hours. This is for an ideal case. Most likely you're not gonna get 100% solar, maybe 50%, right? So if you put your solar panels somewhere where you don't have to move it, no matter if it rains or whatever, but you're gonna get a lot of sun and you wire it so that it snakes into your house securely. This unit stays in your house somewhere and you permanently plug something into this unit. During the day, you get probably eight hours of full sun. So you're gonna have to run this another eight hours to power whatever it is. 256 divided by eight is roughly 30 watts. So what can you power that is a consistent usage of about 30 watts. You can plug in some lights, I guess, 30 watts of uh, CFL bulbs, 30 watts of LED bulbs, or if you use a TV for, let's say two hours or three hours, right? And the TV uses 100 watts of energy, then you can indeed plug this in and run your TV off of solar panel. This whole idea is not something I am just pitching you guys that, oh, you guys do this. I just have a 220 watt panel and I'm not really gonna implement this. But guess what? This extension cord that you see here is actually coming from a portable power station that I have connected to my microwave. I've decided to run my microwave exclusively off of solar panels. So it's an experiment that I'm doing in order to reduce my electricity costs. So I'm just gonna keep on adding one after another and powering like different devices in the house exclusively off solar. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys are interested in getting one of these EcoFlow River 2s or the solar panel, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.